Today, I'm gonna to teach you about factoring special cases, perfect square trinomials, and difference of squares. And that starts now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Glad you could make it. Welcome to our channel where I'm Mr. Thompson, and it's our job to show you that bow ties are cool and math can be fun. Today, we're gonna to look at factoring special cases, special cases of quadratics. So we're gonna have some perfect square trinomials today and difference of squares. Before we do that, let's go ahead and get rolling with a little bit of our review information. All right, first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we understand what a perfect square is. A perfect square is any number whose positive square root is a whole number. Any number whose positive square root is a whole number. That's gonna be our perfect square. So as an example, four squared is 16. 16 is a perfect square because the square root of 16 is four. Perfect squares you need to keep in mind. One, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. You make sure you know those. And then a couple of the other important ones, like 11 squared, 121. My students all know 17 squared, 289. A perfect square trinomial is in standard form. It's a trinomial, so you got three terms. And A, B, and C all have a very special relationship. A and C are both perfect squares. A and C are perfect squares. And B, that center term, is two times one factor from A and one factor from C. Let's take a look at our two patterns for this. Remember back when we did FOIL and we were multiplying two binomials together? When I multiplied two binomials in the form of something like x plus four squared, that was x plus four times x plus four, we went ahead and did FOIL, multiplied that out. We ended up with x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. Combine the like terms. Notice that 4x and 4x. Watch what happens when we bring that down. That center term becomes double of my two factors. So the most general version of this perfect square trinomial, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. A squared your first term, B squared your second term in your binomial. We can also do this with subtraction, A minus B squared. So that's A minus B times A minus B. Multiply all that out. That becomes A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. In a perfect square trinomial, your C term is always positive. Remember that in a perfect square trinomial, your C term is always, always positive. Let's determine, is it a perfect square trinomial? Start with x squared plus 18x plus 81. So I'm looking first term, x squared is a perfect square. C term, third term, also 81, a perfect square. So I want to check, is my B term is the center term, double my two factors. X, excuse me, two times X times nine. That works out to be 18 X, check, we're good. So now we can do this two ways. We can solve this by factoring, by using our factors of AC that sum B. Go right on down the chart, list the factors of 81. See here, nine and nine add up to 18. And you know the trick because A is one right there. X plus nine times X plus nine simplifies down to X plus nine squared. Or you can use that pattern. A squared plus two AB plus B squared. In this case, my A is gonna be X. My B is gonna be nine. Substitute that back in X plus nine. X plus nine, that works out to be X plus nine 
squared. Sometimes you're gonna be given perfect squared trinomials that aren't as neat as that last example. Here, we, here we've got 4x squared minus 12x plus nine. So I start to think, okay, do I have perfect squares? Perfect square in the front, 4x squared, check. Perfect square as my C term, nine. Yes, that's a perfect square. Now, I'm checking the center term. 4x squared, Let's see, what do I multiply to get 4x squared? 2x times 2x, so I'm gonna use one of those. What do I multiply the other to get nine? Three, use one of those. Two times two X times three. Yep, that gives me 12 X. We're good. This one is a perfect square trinomial. Now we look here at this next one, X squared minus 13 X plus 36. Start checking, all right. First term, X squared, X times X, we're good. C term, 36. That's a perfect square also, check, we're good. So now I come in and I look at my third term. Two times X times six. That's only 12 X. My center term in this one is negative 13 X. This one is not a perfect square trinomial, so I cannot use the pattern on this one. I'll still have to do factoring if I wanted to solve this, but I can't use the pattern. All right, finding solutions to special cases. Remember, roots, solutions, zeros all mean the same thing. So we're looking at where does this thing cross the x-axis? x squared plus 18x plus 81. We've already factored that one out into x plus 9, x plus 9, or in this case, x plus 9 squared. So we're going to set that equal to zero. x plus 9 squared equals zero. To solve that, I take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Now, when I take the square root of that entire binomial, the square root cancels out the square, so I'm left with just that x plus nine. Square root is zero. Well, zero is not positive nor negative, so I don't have to worry about that plus or minus zero. It's just zero. Square root of zero is zero. Subtract. The nine from both sides, subtract the nine from both sides, we end up with x equals negative nine. I'm gonna go into the Desmos app in my iPad. You could also use your graphing calculator, but for this, I like the fact that Desmos can allow us to open up the window and view it a little bit easier. So I put this into Desmos, and I notice here that the graph is literally sitting it's perched right there on the x-axis. It just comes down, touches, and then bounces off. You know, it's like pilot training, you know, like coming down, just a little, do a little touch and go, wheels down and then right back up. All right, it just touches the x-axis and then bounces off. Right there, one zero at negative nine. Let's try a different one. X squared minus six X plus nine. First thing we're gonna do, Let's check and see if it's a perfect square trinomial. My A term is going to be X. My C term is going to be three. When I go to check the middle, two times one or two times X, excuse me, two times X times three, that results in positive six X. I want a negative. Hmm. I wonder what I can do. Oh, a negative times a negative is a positive. What if I change both of my factors of the C term to negative three? Substitute that back in. Now we've got two times X times negative three. That gives me negative six. Now I know this is a perfect square trinomial and I can use my pattern. A squared plus two, excuse me, I said plus. A squared minus because my B term is negative a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Go ahead and substitute things in. This looks like x minus 3, x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared equals 0. 
square root both sides. Remember when we square root zero, it is just zero, not plus or minus. Solve it and we end up with an answer at x equals three. Once again, going back into Desmos and Desmos graphs this for us and we can see once again another touch and go boom right there at three. Coming down, touching the x-axis at three, not crossing through, just touching the x-axis. So we only have one solution, one root, one, zero. Factoring special cases when A is not one, when your A term in standard form is not one. So here I've got nine X squared plus 30 X plus 25. Nine's a perfect square, so is 25. So nine X squared, break that up, that becomes three X times three X. Break up 25, that becomes five and five. Check my center term, two times three X times five, two times three X is six X times five is 30 X, perfect. This one is gonna be a perfect square trinomial. I can go ahead and use my pattern. A squared plus two AB plus B squared factors out to A plus B squared. Set that equal to zero. So I have three X plus five squared. Set it equal to zero. Move the five to the other side, divide both sides by three. I see that I've got a solution at negative five thirds. So the graph is going to come down and touch the x-axis at negative five thirds. All right, another example where a is not one. Four x squared minus 36 x plus 81. Got a perfect square in the front, perfect square in the back. So four x squared breaks up into two x and two x. 81 breaks up into nine and nine. Checking my center term for my negative 36. Ooh, I'm running into that same problem with the signs again. I'm gonna go ahead and change my factors of 81 from nine and nine to negative nine and negative nine. Now this one works. That's a perfect square trinomial. Go ahead and use my pattern. A squared minus two AB plus B squared. In this case, I'm gonna go with 2x as my a term, and my b term in this case is gonna be nine because I'm using the pattern, I'm using the formula. So I write in 2x minus nine, 2x minus nine squared. And that is gonna give me my final answer when I set it equal to zero, it's gonna give me my final answer of nine halves or four and a half. 4.5 for those of you that love decimals. This one's different. Negative x squared plus 14x minus 49. When I factor the negative one out of everything, what happens is the negative one stands out on the outside and that, that's your reflection. So it reflects that graph over. Now I have x squared minus 14x plus 49. That looks like a perfect square trinomial. We go ahead and use our pattern. This one factors out, but notice I keep that negative one out on the outside all the way through my solving until I'm down to my final answer at x equals seven at x equals seven. So what I'm gonna do is go into Desmos and look what happens when we put this one into Desmos. Our graph is reflected, it's flipped over. So instead of sitting on the x-axis, it's actually hanging from, hanging from the x-axis, but still only one, zero. Continuing on with the other one of our special cases is difference of squares, DOS. All right, difference of squares. Right. Anytime I see these problems, these always make me so hungry. It's like, you know, those tacos, difference of squares. Those tacos, Taco Tuesday. I much prefer Waffle Wednesday, but Taco Tuesday is another good day at the Thompson house. So for 
difference of squares. Difference of squares. Remember the perfect square? Any number whose square root is a whole number. Any number whose square root is a whole number. So a difference of squares has a very specific setup. A squared minus B squared. Notice A is by itself squared minus B is by itself squared. The whole thing's not wrapped in parentheses like it was with the perfect square trinomial. I want you to make sure you understand that designation because this factors, this breaks up into A plus B and A minus B. When we multiplied these out, remember that example of x plus 6, x minus 6. Multiply this out by using FOIL, we end up with x squared plus 6x minus 6x equals 36. And what happens is you see these center terms. The center terms actually cancel each other out and you're left with x squared minus 36. Perfect square in the front, perfect square in the back, separated by subtraction, a difference of squares our difference of squares difference of squares has some very unique characteristics very unique characteristics first it's a quadratic binomial this is a quadratic binomial only two terms so much of what we've been doing so far has been quadratic trinomials three terms this one's only two the quadratic binomial you have no b term no b term and the C term in this case is always, always negative. It's always negative. With that C term being always negative and no B term, what that tells you is from the parent function of Y equals X squared, that graph is translated down. So the vertex comes right down the Y axis. It doesn't move left or right. And there's no such thing as a sum of squares where you push the graph up above the X axis. So it's just going to slide right down. The vertex is going to slide right down the Y axis. And when you slide that graph right down the Y axis, your zeros are opposites. Your zeros are opposites. So you're going to slide that graph down. Your C term is always negative and your zeros are always opposites. Your zeros are always opposites. X squared minus 64 equals zero. Finding the solutions. x squared is a perfect square with a coefficient of 1. 1's a perfect square. My c term, negative 64. 64 is a perfect square separated by subtraction. x times x for our first term. Six, 64 breaks up into 8 times negative 8. 1 positive, 1 negative. So the factoring on this looks like x plus 8, x minus 8. Set each of those pieces equal to 0 and solve. We end up with zeros at 8 and negative 8. Our zeros are opposites. Our C term is negative. Just in case you thought that I was going to leave out an A term that's not 1. Here we go. Our A term in this case is 9. 9x squared minus, there it is, 289. You knew you weren't going to escape a 289 in this video. 9x squared minus 289 equals 0. Perfect square in the front, perfect square in the back. 9x squared is 3 times 3. 289, square root that, 17 and 17. So we got positive 17, negative 17. This factors out into 3x squared plus 17. Excuse me, 3x plus 17, 3x minus 17. Set each piece equal to zero, and we saw we end up with answers of 17 thirds and negative 17 thirds. Once again, our, our zeros are opposites. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of our discussion today about special cases. I hope this has helped you. If you've made it this far in the video and this has helped you with special cases, go ahead and smash that like button. Let the YouTube algorithm know that this is good stuff. Hey, speaking of good stuff, 
you should subscribe to this channel so that you know when I make more good stuff to help you with your math course. As always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you on the next one.